we're going to talk about confirming and disconfirming communication responses. We are working out of BB and Masterson's book on communicating in small groups. I will put a link to that in the description below. So let's get into the details. So some communication is clearly confirming, like direct praise. Someone say, oh, you did a great job. Other communication is directly and obviously disconfirming, like when people give you really sharp criticism. In some responses, however, there's a lot more subtlety, but they still either have a confirming or disconfirming tendency and will often influence the conversation positively or negatively. So that's where we get into confirming and disconfirming responses. A disconfirming response creates uncertainty, distrust, defensiveness, and ultimately ineffective groups because we are in a group and now we're dealing with this disconfirmation rather than working on the task. What we wanna do is communicate with confirming responses that create supportive, trusting, and secure relationships that increase increases the group's focus on the task. So if everybody feels good about the dynamic, then they can focus on the work. So let's look at some disconfirming responses so you can hear, maybe you've heard people say this, or maybe you have done these kinds of things, and hopefully you can avoid them and become a more effective leader or a group participant. The first is an impervious response. So here's where one communicator essentially ignores or fails to recognize the other person's attempt at speaking. I was in a meeting once and there was a conversation going on and somebody tried to jump in with their point of view and the person leading the meeting literally pretended that the person had said nothing, did not acknowledge it whatsoever and just moved on. That's an impervious response. It didn't penetrate the conversation. An interrupting response is where one person cuts another one off while they're speaking. I had a supervisor do this to almost everybody on the team and to me, and finally I had to confront the person. I did it one-on-one, -on -one, but I said, you know, you interrupt me almost constantly when I'm trying to talk in meetings. And the person acted as if they weren't aware of it. And I think it did get a little bit better, but when you're interrupting other people and cutting them off, it's very disconfirming. It feels like you don't, don't even value what you're saying enough to let you finish. Another one is an irrelevant response. So that's where the speaker is saying something and then the next person to talk responds in a way that's completely unrelated to what's, what's being said. It's a change of topic without warning. So maybe you're having a conversation and they immediately pivot to something else without acknowledging what you've said. Number four is a tangential response and that's very similar. That's after a brief acknowledgement, they quickly move on to a different topic in the conversation. So they might say, yeah, that makes sense to me. Anyway, there's some other news I wanted to share with the group. And so it's like a quick acknowledgement and then off on their own tangents, a real blow off. An impersonal response is where a speaker will monologue, they'll talk to you, but it's in a very impersonal or intellectual way, overly intellectualized way, like a distant way that shows little connection to the people around you. So let's say you brought a complaint to somebody and you said, oh, this is really concerning me. And the person sort of sits back and says, yes, one does get concerned about these types of things. You know, kind of a distant response where they're not really connecting. That can be very disconfirming. It doesn't feel personalized. Number six is an incoherent response. I have seen this happen on rare occasion where a speaker will respond and it can in incomplete sentences, rambling, very difficult to follow thoughts. Sometimes they're speaking before they really have their thoughts collected. Other times they might be having some difficulty, they might be having a difficult episode. I've seen people do this in interviews sometimes and it makes you wonder like, is that person okay? In the short run, however, it's very disconfirming for if you just said something and they come at you with something that's incoherent, you, you don't feel like you've been heard. And number seven is an incongruous response where the communicator's nonverbal behavior doesn't match their verbal message and it can be very confusing for people. So they might say, for example, well, I'm not angry. And as they're saying, I'm not angry, they're acting nonverbally like they're very angry. That's a very disconfirming response, mainly because it introduces this kind of uncertainty. You don't know where you stand anymore with that communicator. So let's talk about some confirming responses. Clearly, these are the ones you want to do. Direct acknowledgement is the foundation. That's where a communicator reacts to another person in a direct way. On their very next talking turn, they acknowledge what you're saying and they respond directly to it. 
just responding directly to you shows that they are hearing you and they're in the conversation with you. So they say, oh, that makes sense to me. Or, okay, so how else might we see this? You know, they're, they're connected with you. They're following along. The second is agreement about the content. So this is where a speaker reinforces the information that's expressed by the other person. So let's say I'm looking at a spreadsheet or some content in front of me and with the other group members or another person, and they respond and they say, oh, I see what you mean. You know, the, the, this number is slipping, this variable needs a little more adjustment. Since they are responding in a way that is confirming what I've been saying about this information, there's agreement about that content. And so we're, we're feeling good now, we're, we're on the same page. They're tracking. Number three is a supportive response. This is where the person directly talks about how they understand and they're reassuring the speaker. And it usually will help the speaker feel better. So they say, that makes sense to me, or I'm, I'm following you, or I hear where you're coming from. That's the direct supportive response that we're, we're often looking for. Number four is a clarifying response. Sometimes a communicator will attempt to clarify what the other person is feeling or what the other person is saying. This is often done through follow-up questions. So if I'm talking and another person says, can you go back and explain this to me another time because I want to understand it. So they're asking for clarification and it shows me they're in it with me. They're trying to understand me and that's very reassuring and confirming. And number five is expression of positive feelings. This is where they say quite directly that they feel support for what you're saying and they're reacting to it on that emotional level as well. So they might say, oh, I see what you mean, or oh, yeah, 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 totally, I'm totally with you. There's that kind of emotional charge to their response which shows that they're positively reacting to what you're saying, and that's very confirming. So the key learning points here is that disconfirming responses negatively influence groups and relationships by contributing to uncertainty, distrust, and defensiveness. And if the people in the conversation are focused on that, you're not gonna get very far. And in contrast, we wanna give confirming responses that contribute to support, trust, and secure relationships that make the group ultimately more effective. So question of the day, do you tend to hear yourself communicating in confirming or disconfirming ways? I would love to hear your reaction to this information in that comment section below the video. Thanks, take care, we'll see you soon.